everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the first of two on carbohydrates and this is part of A-level biology. So I'm just going to quickly run through what we'll be going over today. So we're going to be looking at monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides and specifically sort of the basics and their definitions and then also some key examples. We're also going to be looking at condensation and hydrolysis reactions with carbohydrates, specifically their key components, and we're going to look at some diagrammatic examples as well. So a monosaccharide is a single sugar molecule. And a disaccharide is two sugar molecules linked together. So two monosaccharides linked together. And a polysaccharide is multiple sugar molecules linked together. So multiple monosaccharides or disaccharides linked together. So as you can probably see from the previous slide, monosaccharides are the monomers that make up disaccharides, which are the dimers, and polysaccharides, which are polymers. So the examples of monosaccharides we have are alpha glucose, fructose, beta glucose and galactose. And it's two alpha glucose monosaccharides that makes up the disaccharide maltose. And it's alpha glucose and fructose, which make up the disaccharide sucrose. And it's beta glucose and galactose, which make up the disaccharide lactose. And then for the polysaccharides, alpha glucose makes up starch and glycogen and B glucose makes up cellulose. So to make things a bit clearer, you can see here we have our monosaccharides represented um, as specific shapes and colours. And mono actually means one, hence monosaccharides are single sugar molecules. We've then got our disaccharides. Di actually means two, hence these are two molecules linked together. So you can see that maltose has got two alpha glucose molecules. Lactose has got a beta glucose and galactose molecule. And sucrose has got alpha glucose and fructose. And then here we've got our polysaccharides. So poly means multiple, hence these polysaccharides are made up of multiple uh, molecules, multiple monosaccharides or disaccharides. So here we've got glycogen, which is made up of alpha glucose, cellulose, which is made up of beta glucose, and also starch, which is made up of alpha glucose. So now we're going to talk about condensation reactions to do with carbohydrates. So condensation reactions involve two carbohydrates joining together. So two monosaccharides joining to form a disaccharide. During a condensation reaction, as you can probably tell from the title, a H2O, so a water molecule, is actually released and a glycosidic bond is formed between the carbohydrate molecules. So now I'm going to give you an example of a condensation reaction. So as you can see here, we've got two alpha glucose monosaccharide molecules. And when our condensation reaction takes place, H2O water a molecule is released and our maltose disaccharide is formed. And the monosaccharides join to form a glycosidic bond, which is represented by the oxygen molecule highlighted in green. So hydrolysis reactions. In this case, two carbohydrates are released. So the disaccharide breaks to form two monosaccharides. And for this reaction, the water molecule, the H2O molecule, is added back into the reaction in order for it to take place. And the glycosidic bond is broken. So lysis actually means splitting, hence uh, the name hydrolysis, as we're using that water molecule to break the glycosidic bond. So hydrolysis. So here we have our maltose disaccharide molecule. So we're going to add our water molecule back into the reaction in order for hydrolysis to take place. And our glycosidic bond is going to be broken by this, which will therefore produce our two alpha glucose monosaccharides, which we started with in the first place before our condensation reaction. So now we're going to summarise the key parts of condensation reactions and hydrolysis reactions for carbohydrates. So in condensation reactions, glycosidic bonds are formed, whereas in hydrolysis reactions, glycosidic bonds are broken. 
and condensation reactions, disaccharides and polysaccharides are formed, whereas hydrolysis reactions results in the breakdown of disaccharides and polysaccharides, resulting in the formation of monosaccharides. In condensation reaction, a H2O molecule is released, whereas in hydrolysis reactions, H2O is added. So we've now talked about condensation hydrolysis reactions and how we get from monosaccharides to disaccharides and polysaccharides and backwards as well. So now we're going to look at some specific examples. So our example that we've just done was to do with alpha glucose and maltose. So as you can see here, alpha glucose plus another alpha glucose molecule produces maltose via a condensation reaction. And then in order to get back to our alpha glucose molecules, a hydrolysis reaction occurs. We've then got alpha glucose and fructose. So these molecules via a condensation reaction produce sucrose and then sucrose undergoes a hydrolysis reaction in order to get back to our fructose and alpha glucose molecules. We've then got beta glucose and galactose. So via a condensation reaction, these molecules produce lactose and then lactose can undergo a hydrolysis reaction in order to get back to our beta glucose and galactose monosaccharides. So if we then take a look at our polysaccharides, so alpha glucose uh, joins with other alpha glucose molecules via condensation reactions to produce starch or glycogen and to get back to our alpha glucose molecules, starch and glycogen can undergo hydrolysis reactions. We then have beta glucose, which combines with other beta glucose monosaccharides in, via condensation reactions in order to produce cellulose. And then cellulose can be reverted back to beta glucose monosaccharides via hydrolysis reactions. So here I've just created a chart to summarise the monosaccharides, disaccharides and polysaccharides we've discussed and how they interlink. So we've got carbohydrates at the top and then we've got our monosaccharides, so alpha glucose, fructose, beta glucose and galactose. And then we can see that alpha glucose links to our disaccharide maltose, as obviously, as we discussed, alpha glucose monosaccharides make up our disaccharide maltose. We then have sucrose, our disaccharide, which is made up of alpha glucose and fructose, hence it's linked to those. And then we have our disaccharide lactose, which is made up of beta glucose and galactose, hence those are linked to lactose there. We then got our polysaccharides, so starch and glycogen, both linked to alpha glucose as they, as alpha glucose monosaccharides make up those. And then we have cellulose, which links to beta glucose as beta glucose makes up this polysaccharide. So now I just want to go through some memorization techniques that you could use when it comes to trying to revise and remember this content. So our monosaccharides, we know we have fructose, glucose and galactose, so FGG, and I've changed this to FGS, so um, S referring to sugar, meaning glucose. And then I thought about it and I thought, OK, we can put it down as fruit, galaxy chocolate and sugar. And then for the disaccharides, we've got SML, which immediately made me think of small, medium, large. So sugar and fruit, a.k.a. glucose add fructose equals small, which obviously equals sucrose. Then we've got sugar plus sugar. So glucose plus glucose equals medium. So medium, obviously referring to maltose. And then B sugar, so beta glucose plus galaxy chocolate equals large so large referring to lactose so these are just sort of silly easy ways to kind of remember um, which are the monosaccharides which are the disaccharides so you could use these examples if you want to or come up with your own but I just thought I'd give you an insight into how I go about trying to remember lots of different difficult and um, quite a lot of, of content as well particularly with A-level biology. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Every single subscriber makes me excited and happy. Um, I just love to know that we're really growing our community together. 
also make sure to comment down below if you have any questions um, or you'd like me to do other videos like this I will be doing another video on carbohydrates so make sure to look out for that one give this video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure to share with any friends or anybody else you know who would find this useful also check out my Instagram page at biology with Gracie over there I post uh, biology Instagrams quizzes um, updates on my life so make sure to go and follow me there and yeah I just want to say thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in my next video bye guys